Okay, welcome back. So, as I promised, we're going to start now programming a little program to show you how this process really works. I will use again, like the last time, lots of keywords that you haven't seen yet, but don't panic if you don't know these yet. Those will all come in the next chapters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a problem, something I would like to know, and I'm going to solve it with an algorithm and with a program. And this is what the process is, uh, should be looking like uh, for the next couple of months in the semester when you start programming an assignment. And the problem is this one. Say you have a deck of cards, like this, where you have loads and loads of unique cards. Now if you shuffle all of those cards again and again and again, then you get a certain order of those cards. Now what I would like to know is how likely is it that that particular order appears. So how often can this order reappear on the world for anyone who is shuffling such a deck of cards, for instance. And for that I'm going to write a program. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call it uh, something. So I'm calling it the n cards problem. Although it's not really a problem, but we'll make a problem out of it. And we'll now need to start thinking, as we saw earlier in the slides. Um, it starts with, first of all, ideating about what uh, we want to describe and what uh, we would like to have as an answer. So the first thing uh, we would like to have is saying, uh, how likely is it that n cards appear in a certain order. This is a, not a really nicely formulated question yet, maybe we'll improve that in a second. Um, and we would like to have, um, first of all, the description of the card. So as I already showed in the N, we're going to do this for a variable deck of cards. Most deck of cards I think have 52 cards. Um, but let's start something with a very uh, with a very simple uh, problem. For instance, when you have only two cards, so we have the one and the two, for instance. Now, how many options are there? Two. So you have this one and this one. So for n equals two, the answer is. I'll do it like this. The answer is two. Um, for n equals 3, however, um, we can see that it's continuing a little bit easier too, because if you start with three cards, you just take any of those cards, either this one, or this one, or this one. So if you take one of those, then you're left with two cards. And with those two cards, you have this option or this option for the order. So if we want to write this in our program, for n equals 3, we have our first three options and we multiply that by the two options that we have when we're left over with the two remaining cards. And I think most of you will already see a, a pattern appearing here. So for n equals 4, it is exactly the same. So if you have four cards, four cards, there are four possibilities of picking the first cards. Let's pick one there, then you remain with three cards. And those three cards, just like we saw before, um, have three times two possibilities. So we did four times three times two. And this continues. And this is what we, we can actually do in a program. We can, for n being quite large, immediately uh, create this number. So these are the number of possibilities. to order a deck of n cards. And this is the first thing we need to know. And this is a number. It is a number that could get quite big. So we're going to create a variable for that. Uh, let's do that right here. And for now, I'm going to write the variables in one particular type called uh, float. We'll see what a float is later. It is basically a floating point unit. It is a number that has a decimal and can have um, digits behind the decimal. Um, so we are going to say num, uh, nump, say. This is the number of possibilities 
um, that uh, we will use. Now we're going to first declare it. That means we're going to say we're go we need a variable, we need a number here that we can later uh, do things with. And uh, we, in our comments, already going to point back to our description above. So number of possibilities to order a deck of cards. The n here is not really that important yet. Now since I said we wanted to do this for n cards, and let's first start our low, we might need actually n later. Now that I'm going to uh, do with an integer. An integer is basically a number um, like minus 3 or 0 or 5 or 7, but it can go up to a quite large number. But it is definitely not a floating point, you don't have digits behind the decimal. So let's call that actually n. It's not the best name I would say, but uh, for this little program I think it will do n for number of cards. Right. So now at least we have two rep uh, representations in our program for two particular numbers. And what we want to first print out is uh, n uh, nump. So basically, if I ask here, instead of saying hi there, I ask about um, how many cards do you have? Let's move this a little bit so we have a bit more space here. Um, so this is our user interaction right here. Um, we can then ask the user for a particular input and how that is done we will see later as well but this is basically the way it is done um, you take from the input uh, the user input and you put it into the variable n in this case so now n contains something that the user has typed in and hopefully this is a number that will fit and that is not too ridiculous in our case um, it is then usually a good practice to print this again to make sure that we have indeed um, the n captured correctly. Um, so we'll just print back um, for n equals, and then we print our n. We have. And then we'll start on the next line, how many options we have. So there we're going to first um, print out numP. Possible, how do I call this, card orders. There we go. Now, note that I haven't initialized numP yet or we didn't give a value. And in C or C++, when you do this like this, it could take any value at the moment. So we need to initialize this. Usually it's good practice, in fact, to initialize anything straight away. So n I'm going to say is uh, 0, numP is 0 as well for now. There we go. Now, let's go and uh, fix this thing over here. So we want to create, we want to create or calculate how many options there are. And as I said, for n, uh, for n equals four, then I have to do four times three times two. I can like, generalize this and say for n, therefore, we have to calculate in that case our prop uh, no num that I have down there should be equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times etc. If n um, is bigger than, two, than th uh, 3 in this case. Um, but in, in any case what uh, this comes down to is uh, the faculty of course, so n faculty. But this is the exact thing that we need to now imp implement 
into our code. Now you could think about, oh, let's try to include a library, a maths library, where this particular function is already existing. But in this case, this is such an easy thing that we can also do this for ourselves. So let's now um, uh, create exactly that. So once n is known, and this is about here, so as soon as we have our n taken by the user, we can then start um, uh, calculating calculate n faculty. And just to make sure, this is n times n minus 1 times etc. until you end up at a 2. Now what we will see later is that this is very easy to do in any program. We can just do this with a for loop where we basically say 4 and then we have to create another um, uh, um, number that we iterate over so that you can calculate from when to when we do this. Um, and we can also um, define this right here. So we start i going uh, starting at n, and um, i is going to be reduced by 1 each time. So n, n minus 1, n minus 2, etc. And we stop at this criterion when n is bigger, um, as long as n is bigger than 1, we're going to do this. As soon as n is becoming 1, we don't need to do this anymore. We could do this, of course, because at the end then we will have this times 1, but that doesn't make too much of a difference. Right, so this is called a for loop. If you don't know this yet, don't panic, we'll see this later. Uh, but here I can iterate exactly and do exactly this thing over here. So we want to say here our num p, actually let, let me start and do this. So num p equals i times num p. Now this is one way we could do this. So in this case, the first time we enter here, num p equals 1, i equals n, so num p equals 1 times n, so n. i is still bigger than 1, so we do this again. So now i becomes n minus 1. Once this happens, you do num p equals num p times n minus 1, etc. and so on and so on and so on. So at the end here, we can assume that num p equals the faculty of n. And that is exactly what we want to have for now. We want to first test whether this is already working. Now we've already done a lot of programming. I have more than one screen here. Um, I didn't do as many comments as I, I should have done perhaps, but I think this will suffice for now. So let's see if this is working. So we save this and in the other window pane we'll start, um, let's see if we are there, no. So we should go in the right directory. We have our CPP file still. Um, and then we compile with our output test again. It worked. I didn't make any mistakes. That is very pleasing. And now let's execute tests. Now, as you see, we can here now enter a number. How many cars do we have? Let's start with something small so we can actually check that it works. So if we have three cards, it should do three times two and it should return 6. There we go. So for n equals 3, we have 6 possible card, card orders. That already fits. Now let's up it a little bit. How many cards? What if you have, for instance, 9 cards? Oh, this is quite big already. What if we have 12 cards? Ooh. Now we're going to start with really big numbers. So what happens if we have a 52 card deck inf infinite. Now what is behind all of this we will see a bit later. But what this means is that we have such a gigantic number here that our program or in this case the compiler could not really um, make head or tails from it. 
But it does work. It does not work for extremely large numbers, perhaps, but it does work. Now, one of the things we definitely should have done is also make sure here that uh, this n is a proper value. This is something that you definitely need to afterwards put in. So we need to check in with an if statement if n is bigger than 2, for instance, would in this case be very important. And that n is also smaller than a particular number. Not that we can type in you know, a billion cards and then have everything crash. Now, what I wanted to know in the beginning, however, is not how many possibles, the number of uh, possible ways to order a deck, but how likely is it that this order appears, or that one particular order in a deck of n cards appear. And for that, I have to basically do one over that particular order, which is again a floating point. And in that case, I could just, in this case, say 1 over this. So if you have loads of different card orders, then it becomes less and less likely that you have exactly these cards. So we write that out and test that program again. We have to compile it first. Yeah. And we output again to test. And now let's execute this again. How many cards do we have? Say we have only three cards, then we know there are six possibilities. So what we should get back is the probability 1 over 6, which is 1.16666 1 and so on. So that works. That means that um, there's about 17% if we, have, uh, if we have three cards, there's about 17% that we have a particular order of these cards. Now what you see is that if we have more and more cards, so if you have nine cards, this probability is two, or almost three, um, times uh, or to the uh, exponent of uh, uh, minus six, which is a really, really small number. And the higher we go here, so if you go to 12, um, the faster this goes down. And the more unlikely it is that if you shuffle a deck of n cards that you get one particular order. And this is known as uh, uh, one particular paradox, although it's not really a paradox. But it's very surprising to see that it's very unlikely that if you shuffle a deck of n cards where n is a little bit larger than 10, then the likelihood that you get this particular order is really, really low. So if you have 52 cards, like in most decks, this is really, really unlikely. Let's see how far we can go. Okay, 30 we'll still have, but exactly, those are really, really low probabilities. All right, so that is to show you how a normal, in short, uh, programming uh, assignment can go. Hopefully without too many trying to compile it and with lots of thinking. Um, and, of course, also a lot of documentation. Okay, so that's it for now. I'll see you on the next session.